Hello everyone, let's eliminate that plastic smell and build Nevermore. I've spent significant time tuning my 3D printer in an effort to make it print faster, and it certainly is. Um, I'm printing normally uh, at 250 millimeters a second. I actually plan on increasing that, but one of the things I've noticed is as it's dumping out large amounts of plastic quickly, the smell from that plastic is much worse than it ever was. So I needed to do something, and Nevermore came in. There are currently two options for building Nevermore. This is the V4, it uses a single fan, it's smaller, and for many printers, uh, just maybe more convenient in terms of placement. In this video, we're gonna be building the V5. The V5 is the second current model of the Nevermore, and it's larger, it uses two fans, two blowers actually, and it's designed to sit under the print bed. So it sucks air from the rear under the print bed. Instead of blowing it straight forward, it blows it up to help circulate air within the 3D printer. Um, in this case, an enclosed 3D printer, which is where I assume you'd be using either one of these. And here you can actually see it installed on my printer. Nevermore V5 is mainly comprised of these two major pieces. Uh, the fan or the blower holder, as well as the charcoal cartridge. And uh, there are four spots on each side for six by three magnets. Uh, you can see on this one, I inserted them already. And uh, the lid opens up for the motor or for the blower housing with the ventilation, um, as well as uh, here you can see where the blowers get inserted. And uh, we'll also add a heat set insert in here for a bolt for the cover to tighten it down. Uh, this is the uh, cartridge for the charcoal, activated charcoal. Uh, it also has a spot here for a heat set insert for a bolt. And here you can see uh, where the air gets blown in from the blower portion and it ejects uh, vertically uh, to help circulate within the enclosure. You'll also need two 5015 blowers. Uh, in this case, uh, I have Sunan and they are 24 volt blowers. Uh, I mainly use 24 volts on my printer. You'll of course have to select the voltage that works best for your controller. You'll need two M3 heat set inserts, a couple of small M3 bolts to secure the lids to the M3 inserts, a couple of T-nuts, M3 T-nuts to secure Nevermore within your printer, and a couple of M3 bolts long enough to reach the T-nuts depending on where you install Nevermore within your printer. And you can see here these install on the side, um, which is the expectation as to how this gets mounted most likely to the extrusion within your 3D printer. In order to build a cable uh, to the controller, a couple of uh, uh, some heat shrink tubing, and in this case, case I'm also using some super glue to secure the magnets to six by three magnets that'll be used to hold the two halves together. So the first thing I did was install the magnets and when you do uh, have your magnets in a stack like this and insert. Um, these are really friction fit uh, and for the row below flip the whole stack over and that way you get the polarity right so these magnets aren't trying to reject each other. And uh, again, starting up here is a stack, and then flip it over to get the other side. And uh, these are friction fit. Unfortunately, um, I thought I'd have problems. So on the second half, I actually drilled these holes to be a little larger, um, and I should not have. Uh, just use friction. Otherwise, you're going to have to use super glue, like I'm going to do here. So here I'm preparing the uh, second set of magnets that are gonna go in the other half. I'm attaching them, again, to make sure I get the polarity right and a quick test to make sure everything aligns nicely, and it does. And now the glue. And then join the two halves together and let it sit for about a good half hour to make sure it cures. These magnets are really, really strong. And again, make sure they're aligned well and uh, let it be. Now with the magnet secured, we're going to fit the blowers. And notice at the bottom here, uh, there's these little channels uh, that have been cleverly designed and they are to feed the wiring. 
And just to get a quick idea here how this is going to work, I'm feeding the wire. Uh, there's a hole here um, which allows you to bend the wire around itself. And um, again, I'm just really test fitting at this point. And my ultimate goal here is to mark or um, lay out how I'm going to modify the fan because uh, the instructions for the Nevermore indicate that we have to cut the shell of these fans. And by placing it in here, I can mark the location of where that's going to happen. I'm using uh, an X-Acto knife here. Uh, you can use a pencil or whatever it is you need, but this is where I'm going to cut. And the mark is a little bit hard to see, um, but it's just there faint. Uh, I apologize due to the lighting. And we're going to cut that section out. So the designer made both blower openings uh, exactly the same size, which is nice because it means both fans get cut in the same place. So I just went ahead and marked that one as well. So I use this razor saw to make the initial slice uh, right at the line uh, that we marked uh, for the section that needs to be cut off. Uh, this is kind of dangerous. <laughs> be really careful. And uh, if any of you have some better ideas how to do that, please let me know or let us know below. And then I remove the top and there should be a nice little cut there. And then I used a utility knife to uh, cut out that section that needs to be removed. Um, again, be really careful, uh, but it comes off quite easily. And uh, a little bit of cleanup to try and make sure the edge is really nice and smooth. The other half of the blower with the actual fan and motor uh, is a little bit more challenging and I was worried about uh, damaging the uh, blower blades. So I went back to my razor saw and slowly <laughs> cut the section off. So both powers are now cut. Uh, it's not a perfect job, but it'll be good enough. So now we install the blowers and we've got to feed these wires through the channels. So these all fit properly. There is a diagram online by the creator of Nevermore. Actually, it's not a diagram. It's a series of photos that show how this should happen. I strongly encourage you to go take a look to make sure this is all clear. Due to the black ABS here and the lighting, this is just a little bit hard to see, not to mention my hands are in our way. So I apologize about that. But this is going to feed all the way through under both blowers. And uh, there's a little opening on the side where all these cabling or all these wires end up. And then we feed the second blower wires through. And this one is kind of interesting because it actually doubles back on itself. Um, and so you feed it through the hole at the end of the channel, and then you feed it back through in the exact other direction through the same hole in the same channel. Before both blowers can be fully inserted, you do need to make sure as much slack as possible in the wires has been removed and um, that the wires are completely flush into the base and that there's no wires or part of the wire that are sticking up. So especially the section that loops back onto itself, um, there should be nothing that's getting in the way of either fan and it needs to be completely flat within the shell. 
Make sure by hand you test or turn each blower to make sure there's no drag or nothing getting in the way because if the wire isn't flat completely in the shell, um, that means the uh, blower will, the plastic will twist a little bit and uh, the blower will not turn freely. And I've had, I had to make quite a few adjustments to make sure this worked well. Make sure you feed the wires through the holes on the side. Uh, that way we can close the lid and bolt this down properly. And then one last test, make sure the blowers are spinning properly, everything's working as it should, and then we can place the lid. Next, we insert the heat set inserts for the lid. I also went ahead and installed uh, the cable uh, and the heat shrink tubing. So now we get to install the activated charcoal. So I ended up purchasing a pack of the Nevermore certified just to make sure I'm getting at least on first run uh, the right charcoal and one that doesn't have acid in it which seems to eat away at the insides of the non-stainless steel items in the printer. And uh, you know at some point in the future I figure I'll work out where to source it possibly cheaper but honestly the price isn't bad. Um, it's not bad at all and this comes with really quite a supply of charcoal. Also, uh, this cartridge is the larger cartridge. You actually have a choice um, when you print the V5. Um, and because of that, when I run this, I'll pretty much be running the fans or the blowers at full speed. Um, if you go for the smaller one, uh, I think you'll have a little more choice in terms of making sure it's quiet. But still here, I'm adding the charcoal, leveling it. Um, I'm not packing it in. Um, but I'm trying to make sure that it's completely full to the top and even. So uh, when I put the lid on and when this actually starts running, I don't want the majority of the air to blow over the charcoal. I want it to blow through the charcoal to make sure we're getting that filtering effect. And then close the lid and bolt it so the lid doesn't come off. So here you can see the Nevermore installed under the bed. For the electrical connection to the printer, I'm using a Spider V1 MCU and all my 24 volt fan sockets and well, frankly, all my sockets for 24 volts are used. So I'm going to use an RGB socket, which I'm not using now. Simply set the jumper to the left of the 12 volt in my case for 24 volt. And I've wired both fans together and I'm going to connect them to this very first spot on the RGB port for the Spider MCU. I'm using Clipper so in order to enable the fan um, in the printer CFG file I've added this fan generic Nevermore and you here you can see it highlighted that RGB um, power outlet is pin PB7 and I have it simply set to a max power of one. After saving those changes and restarting Clipper, you should see uh, Nevermore appear in your fans and output. Um, I'm using Fluid here, obviously, and uh, later I plan on setting this up so as soon as the bed heater starts heating, Nevermore will automatically turn on. But for now, I'm controlling it manually until I figure out the best way I want to control it. I've only had this Nevermore installed for a couple of days, but I can tell you right now it's made a huge improvement in terms of quality of life, um, both for myself and my family. I work out of my basement. They could not stand the smell anymore. Um, <laughs> they wanted both me and this printer out. And I have to say, uh, the smell has pretty much disappeared. Um, it's not just pretty much, it has. So this has been great. It's been a huge improvement. I highly recommend it. Uh, I'll end up changing this probably once a month, uh, the uh, charcoal. But if you found this video useful, please click subscribe. Thank you.